this next section is on regrinding the step drills. So I'm going to go through um, a couple different ways of grinding them. And these are for the step drills and also the subland drills. With a step drill, uh, you grind the point the same way as you would grind the point in any drill. So that's usually done in a second operation. You grind the points and do the steps or the other way around, doesn't matter. To set up the grind, you use no oscillation and you also use a number six cam. That's used for a two flute right hand step drill. If you have a left hand, use a number five cam. So load the cam in. Set here. Now the angle that you want to set up to grind, again, without the oscillation, you have to move it 10 degrees to the right off center. So if you want to have a 90 degree included angle step, we would set it at 100. Put it in the right hand slot. Just set the lip of the drill out in a convenient spot. Bring your grinding wheel over. Now when you're grinding these, it's make sure that you have a nice sharp corner in the wheel. You don't have too much of a radius. And it may help to use a finer grit wheel for doing this type of work to hold the form in the corner. much undercut, just enough to put the radius of the wheel behind the, the land of the drill. So set your cam relief anywhere about 14, 16. When you're grinding this way, you do tend to undercut the drill, so as you grind some off, you should also back your, back your wheel back a little bit at the same time every few, every few passes so that you don't make too much of an undercut on the drill. Now there's another way of grinding the step drills too. Now this, this method, you do not get an undercut. To do that, you would set your, you'd first using your angle dresser, dress half the angle on the wheel that you want on the point. Say if you wanted a 90 degree included angle on your step, you would dress a 45 degree angle on the wheel. Then you would set the drill straight, work head lock straight in, and then come straight down so you're feeding down the axis of the drill so you don't get any undercut. Uh, if you do want a slight amount of undercut with this, you're going to have to use a dish or cup wheel that's recessed on the side. You don't want to have a flat side on the wheel when you're doing this type of work. And if you're doing a 180 degree included step, you have to use an undercut wheel. Otherwise, you'll be grinding the side of the pilot when you're grinding the step and you'll leave a large, there's no way to eliminate the problem of the radius uh, with, the, with the grinding wheel. Also, when you're doing a 180 degree step, you can use another method other than using the cam grinding. What you can do is use the index type grinding. In this case, then you would do is set up with the latch in the number one slot, set the lip of your drill, bring the grinding wheel in close, then what we do is drop the grinding wheel down below center. I recommend, say, for grinding uh, uh, secondary relief or grinding the heel back, that you would drop it down to about 30 below center. So this is going to be ground like the relief on end mill, primary and secondary. You would grind the secondary on both sides to clear the heel and then you can do is lift up 
probably to about 10 on your scale and then feed across again to grind a primary. Uh, uh, this way you don't get as much of a radius on the edge. When you grind the cam you always get a certain amount of radius. With this if you have a very sharp wheel you can almost eliminate all your radius and that's why it's sometimes better to do this on a 180 degree point. Now if you have a subland type drill instead of a regular step drill the technique is, is pretty much the same. You do have to instead of rotating all the way around you're going to have to rock the drill back and forth. You do is you bring the wheel up toward the drill and on the, on the subland you have a secondary land that runs from the point back and you don't want to rotate around far enough you're going to nick that edge. So you would bring it in and just rock to clear the step and keep feeding in and again occasionally backing your feet up so you don't get too much undercut. Rock it through all the way then zero the feed on the cross feed here bring it back index to the opposite lip and then feed back and grind back to zero so that you're going to get it evenly ground on both sides but you're not going to come around and nick the land and with this type of drill you also on your flatter angles would have to use an, uh, an undercut wheel a dish or a cup wheel so that you don't nick the pilot as you're coming around. When grinding uh, the step drills and you're trying to maintain the lengths, say you want to have a certain distance between the drill point and the drill step, you have to uh, keep track of how much you're grinding off of both. So initially you would have to say measure the lengths on a comparator or on a scale depending on how accurate you have to be. Put it, the tool in the chuck and then when you're grinding the point you would come up to it and when you reach, you would start to grind and when you reach your outside corner, that's your reference point, you then zero the slip ring on the feed and grind off a certain amount, a certain set amount to sharpen the drill and then you would have to document this because you're going to be doing the step in a second setup so you're not going to be able to go right from one to the other. You would grind that amount off and then you would have to grind some material off the step as well. Now if you have different angles between the point and the step you're going to have to calculate uh, the amount to grind off because of the difference because of the difference in the angles and again when you do the step you would come in until you touch the shoulder, zero the feet, and then grind that amount off the step. Another way of doing that is to, if you're doing a lot of these, is to make a small gauge that you can slip on to the tip of the step drill. With that you would have a, a chamfer on the, on the gauge to sit down on the step and you would have the top of the of the gauge would be the point where you'd have to have the, the tip ground back to and you can even have a small notch in there if you have a minimum maximum if you have a certain amount of tolerance that's allowed uh, on the pilot. So with that you can set it, grind some off and actually check it with that right on the machine. You don't have to take it off and then you can come back and grind more off one or the other if you need to. If you're grinding angles that are less than 80 degrees, included angle, you can't uh, swing the workhead from this angle. You need to swing it around to the opposite side. Now what happens when you do that is you get the setting blade in the way as you can see. There's this pin below that locks it in position on the other side. You can pull the pin, let it swing back out of the way, keep it on this side, then to locate the tool you would just set it so that the cutting edge is roughly level with the step and swing it away. Now in this case this is a 60 degree included angle on a combined drill and countersink. Again you always set it 10 degrees to the right so you'd be setting it beyond 10 degrees beyond the 60 and now when you're over on the left sand side of the scale actually the limbers are getting smaller so in this case you set it at 50. 
once the tool is set in place, you can switch on. relief set probably be about 14 to 16 uh, on the scale here and again watch out for your undercut back your wheel back a little bit as you're going so you don't get too much and uh, with this type of angle you can also dress your wheel so you can actually by dressing the wheel you can come straight in and do any angle you want 